Welcome to the MCPS Spotlight. In 2014, MCPS began its multi-year effort to provide all students with mobile computers and access to a cloud-based learning platform. The district's chief technology officer, Mr. Sherwin Collette, joins us today to tell us a bit more about this technology initiative. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So can you give us a brief overview of the goals of this technology initiative? Yes, so the initiative has its roots in work we did in 2012-2013, where we shared with the board uh, in May of 2013 a new vision for our strategic technology plan. Uh, and that was really informed by months of conversations with stakeholders that included parents, students, teachers, administrators. Uh, we spoke with uh, staff in uh, colleges and universities and business and industry. Uh, and the effort really was to understand if our students, when they're not at school, are immersed in technologies uh, that involve mobile technologies, interactive technologies, cloud-based technologies, how would that inform how we, how we would teach them and how they would learn? Providing mobile devices versus going to a computer lab, what are the advantages to having more of a, mo a mobile-based um, policy or initiative? So by moving technologies directly into the classroom, we do a number of things. We provide teachers with the opportunities to be able to better scaffold and differentiate instruction for their students. We enable them to uh, minimize the, the transition times of leaving their classrooms and going into the labs. Uh, we provide the basis for them to, uh, as they group and regroup students, really be able to target content and curriculum and instructional materials directly to match their students' needs. So the rollout began last year. Um, how many students received mobile devices? How did we start the launch and how are we expanding in the years sure. to come? In year one of the initiative, we um, rolled out to grades three and five in elementary school, uh, grade six at the middle school, and high school is focused on a content area. Uh, last year's content area was social studies. Uh, we took that decision in partnership with our colleagues uh, in curriculum and instruction and having spoken with high school principals uh, about how to begin that effort. Uh, so then the initiative in year two for this school year uh, is being rolled out to grades four across all of our elementary schools and roughly half of our middle school seventh grade classes classrooms uh, at the middle school level. Uh, at high school, we will focus on uh, essentially reprioritizing, rebalancing, giving schools an opportunity to shift uh, some of the resources they received last year to other content areas. And what are we hearing so far from our schools, from our principals, teachers, once we started this rollout? What, what's some of the feedback you've received? The feedback's been extraordinarily positive. I think the, uh, in some, I, I, I point to an, an elementary school student who uh, shared with his principal uh, uh, upon disembarking the bus last year, he was so excited as a third grader to be having these technologies in his classroom. This is a student for whom these technologies are not accessible at home. Uh, and we hear time and again the ways in which the initiative is helping to create uh, a more level playing field, provide access to all of our students during the school day. Uh, and we will continue to build forward from that. For our teachers, they're seeing uh, great opportunities to interact with their, their, their students on an ongoing basis. We see the opportunity for them to provide feedback um, in a timely way. As students are working on a, a given assignment, they're able to uh, peer in, see how they're progressing, maybe provide a little guidance here or there, compliment them on their progress thus far, and for students to work collaboratively and sharing with each other uh, their, their progress and their ideas. And we're talking about anytime, anywhere access. The new 21st century learning space. Tell us a little bit more about that vision. Yeah. So the vision for 21st century learning spaces is really our reimagining classrooms that we acknowledge that school doesn't begin and end when the bell rings at the beginning of the day and when it ends at, uh, and rings at the end of the day. That the classroom itself is being reconceptualized. That our students already are on social media exchanging ideas. And so then how can we as a school system help to facilitate and further that? And so recognizing the opportunity with the emergence of digital content that we have then by bringing technologies directly into our classrooms. We have the opportunity to provide students uh, with the means to, when they begin something in school uh, and they leave at the end of the day, they can continue to work on that. Prior to the initiative, they would work on something at school and they wouldn't be able to get to the network to access that. In this way, whether I'm a student or a staff member, I can access whatever I need wherever I am. 
And I know we, our hope was to expand it to many more students in classrooms this year, but due to budget constraints, we had to scale back a little bit. What are the plans moving forward to expand this initiative? Sure. Well, moving forward, we acknowledge that there is a broader uh, budget context within which we work. Uh, we will continue to advocate for and uh, through the process identify those areas of need. The, the interest quite clearly would be to uh, expand beyond seventh grade, complete seventh grade in middle school and expand to uh, eighth grade, uh, and to then re-engage uh, our high school uh, colleagues and students around looking at the next uh, content area. Uh, and then we certainly know that there are primary grade schools, uh, and so the opportunity to begin rolling down uh, in grades two and moving, uh, moving lower uh, would be our hope in the next year. We thank you very much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on MCPS Spotlight. <music>